All right, so we're now on number nine. And uh, let's see. On number nine, uh, we're supposed to find f times g of a. Now, be careful here. This is not composition of functions. Composition would look like a small circle. And so this is multiplication. By definition, this means f of a times g of a. That's what this means. So f times g of a is found by multiplying the f, f of a times g of a. All right, so in this case, f of a is going to be a squared minus 11. I'm just replacing x with a. g of a is going to be 9 minus a. Now you do need the parentheses here, so you can see you're going to have to FOIL this. And I'll assume you can do that. When you do that, you get the answer I have here. Let's look at number 10. So decide whether f is even, odd, or neither. Now we know even functions have y-axis symmetry, and odd functions have origin symmetry. Now sometimes students will just go on the calculator and look at the graph and determine it that way. On the test, I'm going to want something more than that because I can't really... <laughs> Um, I, I, actually, I want to know that you can do more than just plug this into your calculator and look at the symmetry. We have what's called the algebra test, and so you replace x with minus x, and so that's what I did here. Now, when you multiply 4 minus x's, you're going to get a positive x to the fourth. Here, negative x times negative x is x squared, so that doesn't change which means the sign of this term doesn't change. So notice f of minus x is equal to the function we started with. And so in this case, this is an even function. Now, what if each of my terms had been opposite? Then we would have had f of minus x is equal to the opposite of the original function. And that's the case where you have origin symmetry and you're odd. Otherwise, you say neither. All right, so this one is even. Let's go on to number 11. So we've got a baseball that's projected or thrown uh, from ground level at this speed. The height is a function of time given by this equation. So basically, they're using s for height and um, t for time. Now notice this is a parabola that opens down, and so you're going to have a maximum here. And in fact, notice that's what they're asking for. What is the maximum height reached by the ball? Uh, S is height, T is time. And so anytime you're working with the parabola and you're going to have to find a maximum or minimum, you're going to find that at the vertex, and so we need the vertex formula. And so that's what I used here. Now, you have um, x equals negative b over 2a, but our input is actually a t value. Just keep that in mind. So negative b, that's going to be negative 96 over 2 times a, which is negative 16. And so you get 3 when you simplified that. Now, to find the actual maximum height, a maximum is always the y value of the vertex. So you have to find s of 3, or just plug in 3 for t, and you get 144. So the final answer here is 144 feet. All right, let's move on. Okay, on number 12, boy, this one looks kind of complicated. It's a little bit long. Um, what you see on the final will be similar, but not quite as bad. Um, but you just got to take it step by step. We, you, you need to make sure, if you don't already know your properties, you want to write them out on a card and get to know them for the test. So the first thing you're going to have to do here is write this radical using a power. 
Remember, anything that's a fourth root can be written to the one-fourth power. If this were a square root, it would be to the one-half power. And so now I can, uh, be, before I can get into here, now I can move, using my um, power rule, I can move that exponent to the coefficient to be out front. And so we get one-fourth log base a of this fraction. Now notice you have powers, so you're going to be using the power rule at some point. You have products n to the 20th times n to the 16th. But you also have that in the denominator, so you can't use the product rule yet. But we can use the quotient rule because we do have a quotient or a division of two things. And so that's what I did first. And so this is just using the quotient rule. Now notice I use parentheses because I'm changing one log to two logs and the one fourth is going to apply to this whole thing. And so the next thing I did is I used the product rule here to break this up. That's what I did here. So log base a of n to the 20th plus the log base a of n to the 16th minus and again, I'm breaking this into two logs, so I need to make sure I distribute that negative. So log base a of a to the seventh plus the log base a of b cubed. And so now I'm ready to distribute the one-fourth and also the minus here. That's what I did next. So you have one-fourth the log base a of 20 plus one-fourth the log base a of n to the 16th minus, now don't forget the one-fourth, the log base a of a to the seventh minus one-fourth the log base a of b to the third. So now I can use the power rule. Now we'll multiply by whatever's out front. Usually it'd just be 20 times one or just 20. But it's 20 times a fourth, which is five. 16 times a fourth, which is four. So five log base a of m plus four log base a of n. Now be careful here, this is the log base a of a to the seventh power. In other words, remember a logarithm is an exponent. In this case, it's the exponent you put on a base of a to get a to the seventh. Well, that's just going to be seven. So seven times uh, minus one fourth is minus seven fourths. And then finally, I, I pulled this three out front. Three times one fourth is three fourths. So it'll be minus 3 fourths times the log base a of b. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number 13. So here we're doing division, and it's synthetic division. Notice there's some powers of x that we're skipping, so we have to put in some placeholders for that, basically a 0. Now since we're dividing by x minus 4, we're going to put 4 in the box. And then we'll take our coefficients from here. Notice the zeros. You don't put the zeros in, your answer will not be right. So then I drop the 1, and I, I did the synthetic division as I did earlier. I'll just let you do that there. And that's what you should get. <coughs> Excuse me. And so your quotient is the answer you get here. Now your degree is 5 here, so you're going to drop, drop that by 1. So when you write it out, you get x to the 4th plus 4x cubed plus 17x squared plus 68x plus 272 and notice the remainder is just 1087. Alright, let's move on to number 14. So here it says find the zeros. That's just the values of x that cause this function to equal zero. To find them you just set the function equal to zero. So that's what I did here. Now, if you try to graph, or I'm sorry, to factor this, you find that it doesn't factor. And it looks like the quadratic formula would be the way to go here. It's not going to be one for completing the square. So there's your quadratic formula. I plugged in the numbers. Remember, it's a minus b, so minus a negative 1. That becomes a positive 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. And then minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 5. All over 2a, so 2 times 2. And so when you simplify this, you get 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 39 all over 4. Now, 
The square root of negative 39 is not simplified because you have a negative under the radical. And so you do end up with the answer I have here. Either of these are correct, although I think the, the 1 fourth plus or minus square root of 39 over 4 times i is probably most correct. Because it's of that form a plus bi, the form of a complex number. And by the way, 39 doesn't have any perfect square factors. That's why we stop there. Let's move on to number 15. All right, so on number 15, you're supposed to find the oblique asymptote. Let me just review real quick. If you have a function, a rational function like x plus 2 over x squared minus 5, the degree of the bottom is bigger, and so this is top heavy. I'm sorry, bottom heavy. This is the one where we have y equals 0 as a horizontal asymptote. And when you're top heavy, there is no horizontal asymptote. And the other thing I would remind you of, if you had something like f of x equals uh, 2x plus 1 over x minus 3, this is the case where we say it's balanced. And so y e would equal 2 over 1. You just take the coefficients of the leading term. But again, you're going to have an oblique asymptote when you don't have a or when you uh, yeah, don't have a horizontal asymptote. To find it, you just divide the numerator here by the denominator. Notice we're missing um, the x term, and so that's why I have a 0x there. And so I did long or uh, synthetic division. And so this, you can check the work here. And this is where you get your answer from. It's going to be y equals whatever you have here. Well, the degree drops from 1, it, or drops 1. It was x squared, so it's 1x minus 4. So y equals x minus 4. That'll be the equation of the asymptote, the oblique asymptote. All right, let's look at number 16. So I think the basic idea here is simple for most people. We can see that going from left to right, we're supposed to find increasing first. You're increasing here, and you're increasing here. Now, we describe where we're increasing, or where the function's increasing, using an interval of x values. So x started here at, that's negative 4, until we get to here where x equals 1. So from negative 4 to 1, notice we use open parentheses, or parentheses. Anytime we're doing uh, or describing where we're increasing, decreasing, or constant, it's always going to be open like that, or rounded parentheses. And then here you can see uh, that we're at 6. So when x goes from 6 until we get to 9, that's also where we're increasing. Where are we decreasing? Well, notice this is where the function's decreasing. It starts when x is at 2 and continues until x is at 6. And then finally, notice here we're constant. That starts right here when we're at negative 8 until x is negative 4. All right, let's move on to number 17. So in this problem, sorry, but you already can see the answer here, but it says find a rational function that satisfies the given conditions. I think it's easier to, easiest to just, I mean, you can actually build it, but it's easier just to look at what we have here and determine which of these meets the requirements. So remember, um, 
Vertical asymptotes occur at a restricted values which are determined by the denominator. Oops, I guess I need to move my mouse again. So if you factor, actually I guess all of these have this factor. Uh, notice for, well first of all I guess I should look at the horizontal asymptote because that's going to limit us to C and D. Because notice the uh, the degree of the numerator and denominator is the same, so we're taking the coefficients of those numbers out front. And so 10 third is the horizontal asymptote for C and D. So how do we decide which one to choose here? Well, the vertical asymptotes, I, I did factor this, and both of these are the same. And notice we do have a, a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3 and also 2, so that's taken care of. So the only thing left to look at is the x-intercept. So what we want to do is let y be 0 and see when the fraction is equal to 0. Well, a fraction will, always, will only equal 0 if the numerator equals 0. And so basically I wanted to know when this is equal to 0. So I factored out a 10. And then here you can factor using the AC method and you get x minus 3 times x minus 3. So you can see that uh, this is going to equal 0 when x equals 3. And so this one does have an x-intercept of 3. Now just to double check, I also did d, and it factors like this. So you can see that not only is 3 going to be an x-intercept, but also 2. And so for that reason, d is not the correct answer. It's got another x-intercept. And so C is the answer. All right, let's move on to number 18. Now it says find all possible rational zeros for the polynomial function. Well, what we do is we look at the factors of the constant. We, we say the factors of P and the factors of the leading coefficient, or I should say the leading term. The leading coefficient here, or Q, is going to be factors of this number 22. So any rational zeros, those are zeros that can be written as a fraction, and they include integers, by the way, are going to include uh, factors of 21 over the factors of 22. And so the way I like to do it is I'll take all of these and write them over 1, and then do the same thing, put them all over 2, so first you get 1, 3, so all of these over 1, you're just going to get 1, 3, 7, and 21. If you put all of these over 2, you'll get those numbers there. Put them all over 11, you'll get those numbers there. And finally put them all over 22, and you get those numbers there. The only difference, they notice they wrote plus or minus each time. I just put it out front. So it does get a little bit lengthy. Let's look at number 19. Now, we I don't particularly care for this problem. There's other ones we could have picked that I think would have been better that you should be able to do by hand. This is a little bit tricky. Um, if you wanted to do it by hand, you would actually factor out a negative 1 from these two terms. You'd have minus the quantity x minus 15 and so you can see that you have a reflection through the y-axis and you're going to be um, since it's a minus 15 you're going to have a horizontal shift right 15 and so instead of going off to the right like this because it's reflected through the y-axis it's going to go this direction and then we're going to be 15 to the right, and so that's why it's this graph here. On the test, I would just put it into the calculator, just because it's, uh, either way, if you can do it by hand, great, but I don't mind if you use a calculator here. Now, as far as domain's concerned, going from left to right, notice there's no leftmost point, so we start at negative infinity until we get to the rightmost point where the x value is 15. So that point is on the graph, that's why we have a square bracket here. 
And then the range at our lowest point, the y value is 0. And notice there is no highest point because this continues up. And so it's 0 to infinity. All right, let's move on. And actually, we'll stop right there, and I'll do one last video.